All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Today is the day you're going to learn how to play White Room by Cream off their Wheels of Fire album in 1968 with the guitar mastery of Eric Clapton and his wah-wah pedal. And we're going to go through the all the guitar parts. We're going to go through rhythm guitar and all the little noodling. We'll talk about the noodling leads a little bit, and I'll break down that great guitar solo section by section for you. And we'll have a lot of fun with that today. All right, well, if this is the kind of thing that you like um, and you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell because the bell lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my lessons have chapters in them, so you can go right to the part of the lesson you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I appreciate that. There's thanks, which is like throwing a tip in the tip jar and a little button below. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got uh, chord charts and tabs for all the stuff I do on YouTube, like this one and... Um, all the links are in the description below. Check it out. Okay, so White Room. This is, uh, of course, a piece of greatness. And, uh, you know, musically kind of interesting because it was uh, sort of a version two, if you will, of, uh, of a song they put out on the previous album, um, Disraeli Gears, and the song was called Tales of Brave Ulysses. It's all the exact same sort of chord progression and even, you know, Wawa all over the place on that one. It just seems like they had a musical idea. They recorded a song with it that way, and then they came back the next year and said, oh, let's flesh that out a little bit more and do something different with it. But but super similar chord structure and everything. And um, uh, anyway, if you haven't heard that, go check it out later. Um, and then lyrically, the song is written by their co-writer, uh, Pete Brown, who uh, I guess this was a poem um, that he had written already in the past, and they applied that musical idea to it, and... ...and anchovies, and orangutans, and breakfast cereals, and fruit bats, and large... A bit, brother. Okay, so let's talk about the guitar tone on this one. So, I'm going with my Les Paul. I'm not sure what which guitar he played um, on this record, and I've, I've long ago stopped guessing what exact instrument these guys are playing, because I'm always wrong. And uh, I don't think the, ins the information on a lot of songs is that good anyway. But I'm going to go with my Les Paul bridge pickup. Um, of course, you want a uh, wah-wah pedal. Um, I'm just using my Dunlop Crybaby. And uh, I'm running a uh, blues driver to boost the signal a little bit. And my EP boost. I'll put all the details of what I've got in my signal chain in the, in the links below. And for the, les for the lesson here, I'm actually running into my Deluxe Reverb. Tone Master, um, but I'm sure he ran through Marshall and everything <laughs> on the recording and everything, and I ran it on my Marshall on the demo that you saw in the beginning. Um, yeah. So anyway, I've got a tone that's about like this. Then you add in the wah wah. All right. So let's. Go with that. All right, now the opening of the song is super interesting. It sounds like a sort of spaghetti western to me, you know, um, those early Clint Eastwood movies uh, from the mid late 60s. I don't know if they sort of got the inspiration of the vibe for that, but the very first part of the song, the whole normal part of the song, most of the song is in 4 4 time, but this intro is in 5 4 time. Um, it's sort of like that bolero sort of beat going on, right? Um, but the chords, are G minor, F, D minor, and C. And you can play those a number of different ways. You know, that's the sort of, um, I think that way accentuates the, the high notes that you hear um, on the record. But you can do it any way you want. G minor. F. Maybe do a D minor like this. Or a C. Or a C like that. But really, those are the notes I think that you want to leave on top. And remember, the timing is 5-4. So you're sort of counting. One, two, three, four, five. Again, right? It's 
Da 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 da. One. Da 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 da. Two. Da da da. You know, come, comes out to five. Very cool. And then the last chord is an A. I think it's an A minor seven of some kind. Now, if you're doing the the first version that we went through. An easy way you can do your A minor seven is to do it down here. You can either do it with your note on the A, or you can pick that up. Either way, might sound better with the A on there. Right? When it goes to that chord, it's actually four four. Um, so that's one voicing. If you're doing the voicing with all the chords up here. Here's another cool voicing for the A minor seven. You just, you're at the C right here. You just leave that C triad and you play an open A and an open E, right? Which is how I normally play it. There's your C. And there's your C A minor, or your A minor seven, right? So let's do one count of the fives and then into the four, right? One. So that last one is a beat of four, and then it's four four for the for the rest of it. So okay, so the verses. So um, really cool progression here. It's a it's a based in D. I'm gonna turn down a little bit. Um, and really, what you want to hit is the the root, and you're sort of voicing those parts of the D. You're not hitting really the. You're not hitting a major. You're not really hitting a minor either. You're just hitting. You're really hitting those. So that's the first one. Then you're gonna see it if you if you voice it with your index finger and your and your ring finger there, it leaves your middle finger free, right? If you normally play to D, your your ring finger usually would be there if you use those fingers. But it's free, which means it leaves you free to bring it down to the C note on the A string. you pick up your index finger. And you're sort of playing in between the, you're bouncing off of the fourth, third, and the second string after whatever root note you're hitting. Bring it down to the B. B flat C. Through that pickup note in there. I don't think that's in there, but that's the formation. D. It's like a C. Where you're leaving that uh, plus two on there. Think of that as a piece of a G chord. And then a B flat C. And the cool thing, you'll hear the bass the first time he follows that root note. Second time, he hits an F. This is the bass now. Really cool way to do an A, B. And he does the same thing on Tales of Brave Ulysses, too. Just a cool little way to add to that. Anyway, I'm getting away from the guitar a little bit, but I just love that little part. All right, so it runs through that, and then it comes to your, I'm gonna call it a bridge section, and then here's really where your first time you're hearing the uh, wah-wah really pronounced, right? So the chords that are gonna happen here are, or C to G, B flat, A, A major, so.
is one voicing. You could also do. Up there. But he does it with the wah wah, right? He's just. Right? So that's just, I love, great vibe that's going on behind there. And that's the part that the Ulysses song doesn't have. The, that whole song is just, the whole thing is... And the only time it varies from that was when it goes to an A. Yeah. Anyway, so this makes it interesting. I'll stop talking about Ulysses now, okay? Yeah, I'm a bitch, brother. Back to this vibe, right? You're going to click on your wah wah and you're going to be sort of sort of fast with it. And then the second time around. We're going to climb back to our root. Right. Now the second time you hear that uh, that phrase, it's great. He throws in an A six um, when he gets down to the A. So this after the second verse, and it goes into this. You hear that note on there? I love that. He only does it once. I don't know if it was a on purpose or not. Whatever. It's great. Right. Um, but that's another reason why I like doing this voicing. I think it's a little more pronounced when I do that sixth up there, but greatness. All right. Um, and you'll notice that there's little noodling solos that start creeping in after each successive verse, right? Um, so you'll hear Eric you know, kick on his wah-wah, and during the second verse, I think, you know, it'll run through the... In the dark eyes. You know, he'll do it in between all the singing parts. And then the next verse... He doesn't wait. He like plays all over Jack Bruce who's singing like the whole time, right? Um, you know, he just goes off in the whole time, which is great. And I'll talk about that for a little bit. That little lead that happens on that part, um, the whole, all of his leads are in the song are all very D minor pentatonic rooted based um, but in that one part during that verse he, he goes and switches to major for a good part of it um, which is just beautiful silver horse Anyway, I messed up a little bit, but you get the idea. I just thought that was cool. Like everything is minor except for that one little part where he goes very, very major. And Eric is the master at just moving in between minor and major pentatonic on all his old rock stuff. It's greatness. So put a little spotlight on that. Okay, so I think that's all of the sort of verse and bridge formation. So let's move right to the guitar solo. So the guitar solo is going to come in again after one of those. And that time
time it holds i don't know how many beats it holds i think they're just in the studio looking at each other to know when to come in again right and so the whole guitar solo comes in over you know everybody's playing over endlessly it just does that forever right um all right, so let's talk about the guitar solo now. So we're going to kick our wah-wah on. I'll break it down into sort of pieces. Um, again, if you're on my Patreon, I've got all this tabbed out completely. So um, uh, you'll have it on there too. But uh, so I'm going to kick on my wah. And the whole solo is all happening in this sort of basic, you know, position one D minor pentatonic, the minor pentatonic one position, I think they call it, right? Right, everything is right there with the addition of a couple of notes up here as you're sliding into position two. So I'm going to add those on. So here's the normal. And I'm adding on those four notes at top. But pretty much everything is right there. So that's the neighborhood that we're going to be playing in, just to let you know that. Um, and he does a lot more from this one position than I thought he did um, when I was trying to play this before. But, but uh, okay, so let's go through it. All right, so here's the first part. Part. Cool little rhythm there. So let's pick that up. We're there. Then we're going to go to this where we're adding our four notes. Wah wah technique. So on this solo, he's really, for the most part, he's just tapping his foot to the beat. It's just that sort of pattern, which I thought was kind of cool. Okay, so we get to this next part. And he does it faster. He pumps it faster during that. And he comes back to normal rhythm. That's pretty much all I'll say about the wah-wah from now on. Pretty much everything is on the beat, except for uh, maybe that little part. All right? So we're coming back off of that. part there so his phrasing is amazing now he's going to go to the seventh the the uh, c note um off of this pentatonic position and he's just going to play on that he's going to establish that as a note he's just going to play around it up and down in every direction, but he's going to let you know I'm starting from there and I'm just going to riff around that one, right? Love that little run. It's hard to play that run when you're slowing it down. I love that. He jumps into that one. That's where it is. I always thought it was up here. But it's not. It's right there. He just plays around that minor pentatonic box. He goes up and down a couple times after that. And he ends up on that D seventh. So he grabs that root note and he bends up a step and a half. You're going to bend up to that note, that note there. 
All right, so you get out of that. He's going to shift up to that seventh again, right? And now we're very with the wah wah. We're going to do a pentatonic run. That's how we're going to end it, right? So that last little pentatonic run is a sort of basic one. All right. So funny, it's all right there. I, I was moving around a whole lot more when I was sort of trying to figure this out on my own before. Um, now I sort of think about the little phrases that he does and what's the next thing that you got to go to and if you find yourself working too hard to get to that next thing then you need to ask yourself did he play it in a different position <laughs> and that's usually the case so everything was just right here with a couple exceptions and that's really about it so all right so let me try and take you through all of that um, in one sort of take let's see Anyway, yikes. I might have tripped on a couple there, but that's that was pretty good. Okay, super fun tune with or without the wah. So that is White Room by Cream. I hope you learned something new today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and uh, if you like this kind of thing and you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell. Um, bell lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. And again, let me know what you thought about this. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do something similar, let me know that too. But until next week, take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.